Hi, I've had a few people ask if I can do a video on how I maintain the calibration of my multimeters I've got here in the EEV log lab. Now, uh, I've mentioned before that I don't actually maintain these meters, like I don't actually pay to get them formally calibrated, or calibrated in quote marks with the calibration certificate and or adjustment or whatever, because it's just not warranted uh, for the uses I do. But I've got a couple of uh, little transfer standards that I can use to verify and maintain uh, the calibration of you know basic volts and ohms and amps of my multimeters. This won't be an in-depth tutorial as well. I just wanted to show off my little transfer standard here and my HP 34. 78A. Now, uh, I'll link in the video to this um, EDC, Electronic Development uh, Corporation, MV106 uh, DC voltage standard that I've got. I, I bought this for like 20 bucks on eBay. It was an absolute bargain. And I took it to the local uh, calibration laboratory, Trio Smart Cow. They're just uh, down the road here. And I'll link in the video to that, and you'll see that this was actually absolutely spot on. It didn't need any adjustment whatsoever. And it's a six decade device, so I can adjust it, uh, well, anywhere from uh, 10.0000 millivolts up to uh, 9.99999 volts. So, it's got three ranges there, 10 millivolts, 100 millivolts, and 10 volts. And this allows me to check the uh, DC calibration of all the meters I've got. Now, the best multimeter I've got here in the EEV Blog Lab is a, a classic HP 3478A. And these are a, an old but a really great bench meter. You can pick up pretty cheaply on anywhere uh, on eBay for anywhere from 100 to 200 bucks, including calibration certificate uh, sometimes. And they're really quite a stable meter. And I highly recommend one, I uh, highly recommend them if you can get one at a reasonable price. Once again, I bought this on eBay. Not sure how much I paid for it. I think it was under 100 bucks or something like that. And I have not adjusted this one either. It is absolutely spot on. Now, what I've done here is I've just let both of these uh, warm up because the 3478A here uses a uh, heated, volt a controlled temperature voltage reference in it. So it does take some time to warm up and also a voltage standard like the uh, MV106 here. You have to, you know, in theory, you should probably leave these sort of things on all the time if uh, you know, if you take your calibration and your voltage standards seriously. But, you know, I don't do that in the lab here. It's just for curiosity's sake and mucking around. But we'll find that this is more than good enough for measuring, for checking the uh, calibration of the multimeters I've got here. So uh, I'm using this MV106 as a trans, what's called a transfer standard. And that means it's, I've had it tested in a proper uh, certified, traceably calibrated calibration laboratory, and it was absolutely spot on. Now, temperature coefficient, I won't go into this. This is not a, a, a calibration tutorial by any means, but temperature's got to play a big role in these. That's why I let these stabilize. I've had them on for an hour or so. The current temperature in here in the lab is about 24.5 degrees uh, Celsius here, but I found the temperature in the lab when it varies from you know 21 degrees with the aircon on up to 26 if I come in at the first time of day and it's summertime and it's a bit warm here in the lab. It really doesn't matter. These things don't drift at all to the resolution that I've got. Now, I just wanted to show off how spot on these two are. Remember, I got these both on eBay. We're looking at you know, like 150 bucks total worth of instrumentation. It's probably more like uh, 200 by the time I included uh, postage here, but they're absolutely spot on. So what I've got is on the 10 volt range, one point, and that's that's what that light there's for, decimal point, zero, 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 zero volts. And so that's a five and a half digit range and the 3478A, five and a half digits as well. There it is, look, it's absolutely bang on. I have not needed to touch this since I bought it on eBay. And 
watch this. I can just dial in the one there and it goes up. Two, three, it's absolutely spot on. Look at that. Could you ask for anything better than that? You, really, in, you know, to get better than that, you're gonna have to have, you know, a certified, uh, you know, a proper certified cow lab. This is absolutely brilliant. So these two together are more than capable of uh, checking the calibration of my Fluke 87 fives and my Agilent U 1272A and my Gossen meters and stuff like that. So more than good enough because they're an order of magnitude better than the other multimeters I've got. But by uh, having these voltage standard with the five and a half digit multimeter, I can check, I mean, if this is still spot on in a month's time, I know that it's gonna be pretty rare that both of them have absolutely drifted absolute up or absolute down. The odds of that happening, you know, are, are pretty low. So I can, I have a good level of confidence that as long as these two continue to match, then they haven't really drifted anywhere at all in absolute terms. Milli uh, let's go down to 10 millivolts. So I'm on the 100 millivolt range and I'm generating uh, 10.000040 millivolts. And uh, once again, you know, it's jumping around. There's a bit of noise there. I might need to let it settle some more or something like that, but it's pretty darn close to spot on, even when we're measuring 10 millivolts. Isn't that scary? So I can go down even further and we're talking one millivolt there, but you know, I mean, we're, we're really down into the noise there. Who knows what this is picking up? I don't know. It's a low impedance source, so it should be okay. But really, that is quite remarkable. I can just dial in whatever I want. Let's go up a range to, well, there we go. We've gone up to 10. So we've put uh, the maximum 10 volts and it's spot on. I love it. And at this level here, when I've jumped up a range, 10.11111, I've still got five uh, digits past the decimal place there, but this is only displaying four. So I can tweak this one and yeah, it's gonna go up by that one. So this one has an increased digit resolution over that, but I can set that to 2222, not a problem at all. Ah, oh, love it. What an eBay score. And as for a resistance standard here, I've made up this little box here using two, um, I think they cost me like $20 per resistor or something. You can get them from DigiKey. There's the Vichy part number for this 10K ohm resistor at a nominal value at 25 degrees C is there rated to uh, plus minus 0.005% or 50 uh, PPM accuracy plus minus or absolute. Uh, plus minus 0.2 ppm per degree C Tempco, and over the load life of it, it's only going to vary by another 0.005% or 50 ppm. And I've got a 1K resistor as well. That one's not 005, it's 0.01. So these are pretty good. And there you go. If I whack that one on there, it's basically least significant digit smack on 1K. So once again, with these uh, two, I can see if they've drifted or not. So I use these as my uh, absolute reference here in the lab. And once again, they, it's, you know, it's uh, if they both, if it varies um, over time, then I know it's uh, drifted, either the resistor itself or the meters drifted, then I can do something about it. But if it basically, if I want to uh, calibrate my meters, I just uh, leave these running for a while, spot check them and bingo, I've got myself my fairly confident absolute voltage and resistance standard. And of course, if you've got voltage and resistance, you can actually measure current as well. Not a problem. So I've got the capability to at least measure up to uh, 10 volts uh, DC ranges. I don't have a voltage standard that can generate higher than that. I've got voltage power supplies that can go up to a thousand volts, but they're not an absolute you know, very low Tempco uh, voltage standard because it's all about that temperature coefficient, the stability. People think it's about the absolute accuracy. It's not. You can have a 5% absolute accurate uh, reference standard and it can be worth, you know, a million bucks because 
it's got a you know a point zero 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 you know one percent temco or something a very low temco and it'd be very expensive so it's not all about the absolute accuracy it's about that temperature coefficient and how much it drifts with time and temperature and what i've done here is i've really cranked up the aircon i've got it down to 19.1 degrees haven't really let anything uh settle at all so it's been ramping down and we're only two least significant digits under so it's not that bad if i switch it down to 100 millivolts we're still uh, sorry 10 millivolts 100 uh, millivolt range we're still spot on in terms of 10 millivolts there but on the 10 volt range we we're using before we have dropped a couple of least significant digits so you can clearly see that one of these or both of these has drifted a couple of least significant digits there it's most likely to be the 3478a actually rather than the uh the voltage standard i've got here but it's only two least significant digits if we let it stable down more we'll probably find that it might settle back down to where we were before but it's not a big deal i mean that's a five degree c a pretty rapid five degree c temperature drop and in terms of uh calibration that is five degree c is a pretty drastic change but even then it uh still really um i'm pretty darn close to spot on so there you go that's just a quick look at uh the gear i've got here in the eev blog lab to allow me to do uh basic calibration checks or you know transfer standard tests and you can essentially do the same thing yourself if you've got a bunch of multimeters you've got two or three multimeters you can continually cross reference them with each other against you know basic resistance standards or you can get a voltage uh, standard chip pretty cheap and build one up or you can actually buy uh, off the shelf ones for like fifty dollars or something like that and really um there's no reason for your meters to be out of calibration in quote marks and when it comes down to it if you really want to go bare bones you don't even really need resistance or dc voltage standards like this if you buy at least have one quality meter like a fluke or an agilent then you can be pretty confident that that meter is going to be absolutely calibrated and mean its specs from the factory when you buy it brand new so if you've got two or three multimeters you can then cross-reference them all against one another and you can be pretty confident that they haven't drifted at all so i've effectively got myself a little do-it-yourself cow lab here and i'm pretty darn confident in the setup and i can continue to monitor this thing over the years check the uh, uh you know the drift of it against other tracely calibrated stuff so you don't necessarily have to send your gear away for calibration especially um if you've got multiple multimeters and you know you measure them all at the start and they're all the same you measure them in a year's time six months time and they're all the same again then you can be pretty darn confident that they they haven't all drifted identically so if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up and if you want to discuss it jump on over to the eev blog forum and just after this i'll link in a couple of videos for the mv106 here and some other calibration uh stuff i've mentioned so go watch those videos if you haven't already catch you next time